Whether you're a small business owner, art student, or home crafter who loves to create, the Locklick Eye Engrave is for you. It's compatible with over 300 materials, including wood up to eight millimeters thick, metal, acrylic, leather, glass, craft paper, and more. I can't tell you how many times I had to purchase craft supplies like this just to complete my projects when this machine does it all. Its 10 watt laser module is fast and efficient and has a working whooshy engraving speed up to 500 millimeters per second. You can use the eye engrave base by itself or with the cover and I'm going to walk you through the steps to set it up and then I'll show it in action and tell you all of the details. The eye engrave cover comes well packaged in foam within a large box. When you open it, you'll find an envelope containing the warranty information, brand welcome card, packing list including pictures of all of the parts, and the user manual with software links. Within the top layer, you'll also find the cover panels, which are clearly marked with the part name and the direction they face when assembled. They have a protective film on them that can be removed. There are two U-shaped metal bars. Again, everything has labels, and as I put it together, I'll call them by name. The second layer contains more panels and the fan. And the third and last layer has smaller pieces within baggies, such as brackets, hardware, screws, electronic components, legs, and the metal base frame. Once all of the pieces are laid out and visible, you can begin assembly. The side with the Locklick logo is the front. Start by finding the bag that contains the hex wrenches and loosen the brackets on the sides of the X-axis motor. These are just in place to keep the bar from moving and getting damaged during transportation. I held onto the extra screws, but there's no need to keep these brackets as you won't need them after assembly. Next, locate the bags that contain the legs, extensions, and pads. The side with the larger thread attaches to the extension and the smaller thread attaches to the engraver body. Mine must have shifted during shipping and the threads were recessed a little bit inside of the legs. If this happens, you can use needle nose pliers or tweezers to bring them up high enough so that you're able to make the connections. Secure all four in each of the corners. If needed, the pads can be adjusted so the engraver sits evenly on the work surface. Look for the bag that contains adhesive clips and zip ties and secure the left side cable to the inside of the base. Then find the Wi-Fi antenna and attach it to the outside of the body until secure. Now I'm going to move on to the enclosure. Find the six angle brackets and secure them using the screws and hex wrench. They go in these spots. If you have difficulty handling the small screws, it might be helpful to drop them into the bracket slots, then line them up with the holes and attach. Now attach the right side panel to the brackets. There are cables that get connected in both of the corners that act as safety stops when the cover is opened and the laser is in operation. You can remove the protective film at any time and use the screws and hex wrench to attach the panel until secure. Repeat the same process with the left panel. It looks the same as the right, except it has a rubberized hole to allow for the cables to pass through. Remember to make the connections on both sides so the safety stop is enabled. Next, attach the back panel, which contains the fan using the screws and hex wrench. When all of the screws are in place, push the cord through the rubberized hole. I needed to take a box cutter and slice an X in the center of the rubber to get it to slip through. Now find the front top panel, front panel, and corresponding U-shaped connector bar. Attach them using the screws and hex wrench until secure. Repeat the steps using the back panel, back top panel, and U-shaped connector bar.
Once everything is secure, find the bag containing the hinges and screws. These are a bit larger than the rest of the screws we've used so far. Use the corresponding hex wrench to secure them all into place. Now locate the bag containing the handle and secure it using the screws. At this point, the body is put together and you just need to attach a few components. Find the ventilation pipe and hose clamp and secure it to the exhaust fan. I found it easiest to stretch the pipe slightly, then start at the bottom and work my way up to the top and push it inward as far as I could. Then tighten the hose clamp. Next, install the light bar at the top of the cover using the adhesive strip. Make sure to face the cord towards the rubberized opening on the left. I placed mine right behind the U-shaped bar and used it as a guide to keep it straight. Find the bag containing the laser module. You'll notice the back has a channel that slides into the X-axis motor. Locate the cable cord and attach it, then place it into the channel and secure it with a thumb screw. Now look for the bag containing the power adapter for the fan and light bar. It has two connections. Plug them in to both components on the outside of the cover on the left. They're both turned on at the same time with this switch. There are little Velcro strips under the lip of the base if you want to secure the loose cords to keep them neat. There's another singular power adapter and cord. They connect to each other and plug in on the right side of the base labeled DC 24 volt. There are several buttons and options on the front panel, one being a type B port if you'd like to plug in the provided cable and use files from a computer. Next is a reset button, followed by a TF and card reader slot, depending on whether you're using a mobile device or a laptop. Next is the main power button. When you turn it on, you'll hear this series of beeps. And at the far right is a key and emergency stop dial. At this point, you can take the remainder of the clips and zip ties to secure any loose cords inside the cover, but the one going to the laser needs to be free to move within the base, so don't anchor it. Now comes the fun part. Download the app on your mobile device by going to the LockLick website or scan the QR code included in the packaging. To run the program on a computer, install the Lightburn program and design right from your laptop. Follow the prompts to add the iEngrave unit to your home Wi-Fi. It will give you an easy password to enter in the next screen. Once connected, you can choose from countless designs and the system walks you through each prompt, such as what type of material you're using and the size of your project. There are directional arrows to help you position your workpiece. Lower the laser to your material and press start and the laser goes to work. The eye engrave comes with three practice pieces of wood and a pair of protective glasses. The laser with the cover is certified class one and without it's class four. There are built-in safety features to guard against overheating and fire, as well as tilt sensors, a safety lock, and an emergency stop button. A class one safety rating blocks smoke, odors, and harmful radiation. Here's my first try, which just barely made it on the test piece of wood, but that's okay. It still turned out cute, and I used it as a garden marker for my plants. You can also upload one of your own photos. In this example, I chose a picture of my cats. I could see this being especially helpful for woodworking business owners. You could offer custom engraved photos for sale, and the options are endless. Lower the laser to just above your material and the machine quickly and quietly goes to work at less than 46.5 decibels. The engraving area is 300 by 300 millimeters and my project took around 15 minutes to complete. Mm -hmm. 
I chose a Christmas theme for my last practice craft. As you can see, there are countless designs to choose from in this category. And because this illustration is small, the eye engrave finished it in no time. This footage is a perfect example of how fast the laser moves. This task took around 15 seconds to complete. I picked a simple holly berry motif to show that you can further customize the art by using markers to give it color. In this example, I turned a piece of scrap wood into a charming hang tag for a gift. This could just as easily work for an ornament or anything else you can dream up. The possibilities are endless with Locklick. I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoyed watching the eye engrave create these crafts for me. I'll include a link in the description for your convenience and let me know if there are any other questions I can answer about this product. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, take care.